Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Aimstone channel. Before we start with the Bitcoin, I just want to apologize about yesterday's video. It seems like the audio in yesterday's video was terrible. And the main reason why I think it was the case because I was too close to the mic. Now I'm a bit far away. So hopefully it is better. But additionally, I am still sick and my nose is a bit stuffy. So I apologize about the bad audio guys. Hopefully I will get better in the next couple of days. But anyway, let's go and take a look at the Bitcoin market. As of the time of this recording, Bitcoin is around 42,300 bucks. It seems like BTC retracing in today's day. Yes, we had a nice pump, that we had a dump, that we have a recovery, and now BTC seems like it's retracing once again. From tactical standpoint, BTC may retest the support line that was a resistance previously. If BTC will retest, it would mean that BTC can drop to $41,000 once again but i hope it's not going to happen i hope it will continue skyrocketing but the reality is bitcoin does not go constantly upwards sometimes bitcoin goes up sometimes it goes down this is just part of the game guys and i hope everybody understands that additionally it seems like we might have a support at this 18 hourly chart that will be 50 day simple moon average if Bitcoin will drop to this 50-day simple moving average, it would mean that BTC will drop slightly below $41,000. Since we have a support and we have a moving average at 41 k But once again, it may never happen. We should wait and see. A Bitcoin fear grid index. Today we are at 70. We are at greed. Slightly lower, we were back yesterday and of course last week. And yes, it does make sense because whenever BTC price drops, Bitcoin market sentiment goes lower. People become more fearful and they just want to run away from the Bitcoin market. Well, maybe not run away, but they definitely do not want to buy. Here's another fantastic Bitcoin market sentiment chart and that would be Bitcoin Google trend. Bitcoin Google trend right now is at 25. It retraced a bit from 30. But look, 25 is still nothing burger. Let's not forget that when BTC was at all-time high back in 2021, Bitcoin Google Trend was at 100, and that was at all-time high for Bitcoin Google Trend respectively. And right now we are at 25, we are just one quarter where we were back in 2021. So just imagine when this Bitcoin Google Trend would be at all-time high where BTC will be. Look, I think if this Bitcoin Google Trend will be at 100, I think BTC can like triple or even quadruple in price from this point on. Okay guys, additionally look at this, 126 days left until the next Bitcoin halving. 126 days would be slightly more than 4 months. That is right, 4 months until the next Bitcoin halving. So yes guys, strap up your seats and get ready. Let me just quickly summarize Bitcoin's performance after each Bitcoin halving. Well, the first Bitcoin halving took place in late 2012, and during that time BTC was around 12 bucks. And during that bull market, BTC topped around $1,200. So BTC generated more than 100x with the spam of one year. 100x, oh man, that is great. The second Bitcoin halving took place in mid-2016, where BTC was around 640 bucks. At all-time high in 2017, it was around $20,000. So from $640 all the way to twenty dollars that would be roughly 33x. Still pretty good. And then the third and most recent Bitcoin have took place in May 2020, where BTC was around $8,500. And at all-time high, the most recent all-time high took place in late 2021, where BTC topped around $69,000. So going from like 8.5k to 69k, that would be slightly more than 8x. So we could clearly see that every single bull market BTC has diminished rate of returns. So maybe next bull market, we're not going to say 8x, we might see 4x. However, it does not mean the BTC will not break six figures. Let's just say that Bitcoin spot cap will be approved before the next Bitcoin halving. If this is going to happen, let's say that BTC at the date of the next Bitcoin halving will be at around $70,000. So even 4x would put BTC slightly below $300,000 per single coin. Of course, we do not know when Bitcoin spot cap will be approved, but I hope it's going to be before the next Bitcoin halving. Okay guys, let's move on. What it feels like owning Bitcoin versus crypto? <laughs> yes guys, buy Bitcoin instead of crypto. Yes, maybe you can find some shitcoin that can skyrocket like 100x, but to be real, to find a good shitcoin is like finding a needle in a haystack. Not gonna happen. Moving on, crypto lead at $1.5 trillion Frank Templeton, Bitcoin is going to become something that every treasury needs to hold. Imagine if US treasury would hold Bitcoin. 
well, this is not going to happen because BTC is direct competition to US Treasury. Yes, they can print the money out of the thin air, and Bitcoin is a totally different network. Bitcoin is a fair money, while Fed's balance sheet is exploded by money. Printer. Moving on. The Prime Minister of Montenegro now owns Bitcoin. Well, I'm not surprised. I'm pretty sure there's lots of politicians that own Bitcoin. They just do not want to admit it because they benefit from Cantillian effect. The closer you are to the top, the more money you're going to make. Now we have news about Gary Gensler. SEC Chair Gary Gensler expressed openness to Bitcoin TFs, currently reviewing 8 to 12 applications. Yes, this is good. Here is more news about Gary Gensler. SEC Chair Gary Gensler on spot Bitcoin TFs. We had in the past denied a number of those applications, but the court here in DC waited in on that. So we are taking a new look at this based upon those court rulings. Look, we know that Gary Gensler and SEC do not want to approve Bitcoin spot ETF, but at the same time they know that US government will benefit hugely from Bitcoin spot ETF. And hear me out. Imagine when Bitcoin spot ETF will be approved and BTC will be like $200,000. Imagine how many sellers there will be in the Bitcoin market and how much benefit will US government get from their taxes. Yes, if you bought BTC, let's say at $20,000 and you sell at $200,000, you made a lot of money and you will pay a lot of taxes to IRS. And IRS does not do shit. US government does not do shit. They just collecting checks from hardworking people like you and I. And this is not fair. I hope government would not exist or maybe we would have small state government. Okay, moving on. It looks like Ledger is in trouble. Hardware wallet Ledger supply chain breach results 600k theft. Well, let's take a look. Crypto hardware wallet maker Ledger published a new version of Ledger Connect Kit and PM modular after unidentified threat actors pushed a malicious code that led to the theft of more than $600,000 in various assets. The compromise was a result of the former employee falling victim to the phishing attack and the company said in the statement. This allowed attackers to gain access to Ledger's NPM account and upload three malicious versions of modular blah 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 and propagate crypto drain malware to other applications that depend on the modular, resulting in a software supply chain bridge. Yes guys, so whenever you use Ledger or any other hardware device, always double check where you're sending your Bitcoin, because you might be a victim of this scam. Ok guys, moving on. Yes, Ledger seems to be uncompromised self-custody solution. Well, I don't know about uncompromised anymore, it seems like Ledger has been compromised many times. Ok guys, let's change gear a bit to take a look at some interesting Bitcoin charts. This first chart represents number of Bitcoin addresses with balance more than 0.01 BTC. That would be roughly only 1% of Bitcoin. Well, 1% of Bitcoin will be like uh, 400 bucks, something like that. And number of th these addresses is just surpassed 12 million. Yes, 12 million is still very small if you ask me. 12 million addresses, even though this does not mean that 12 million people own at least 0.01 BTC. Yes, what it tells me that Bitcoin adoption still remains very small, but the most important thing, it is growing indeed. Here is a cool chart from the rational root. This chart represents having progress. Look, right now we just surpassed 91% Bitcoin progress. So it means that 9% still remains. As I said, 9% is slightly more than 4 months ago, guys. And look, it seems like 9% in the previous halvings BTC has been positive. Bitcoin has been positive 9% prior to second halving and prior to third halving. So look guys, I will be very surprised if BTC will be lower at the next Bitcoin halving than it is right now. And lastly, let's take a look at this cool chart. This chart represents Mayor's Multiple. Mayor's Multiple was created by Trace Mayer, the way to analyze the price of Bitcoin in the historic context. The Mayor's Multiple is a multiplier of this current Bitcoin price over 200 days simple moving average. And current Bitcoin price is like about $42,000 and 200 days simple moving average is around $30,000. If you take 42k divided by 32k, you will get roughly 1.4. So Mayor's Multiple right now is at 1.4. Additionally, simulation performed by Trace Mayor determined that in the past, the best long term results were achieved by accumulating Bitcoin below 2.4 and right now we are at 1.4 so we are definitely way 
below so yes guys continue stacking sets because we are just getting started of this upcoming bull run and lastly let's take a look at this quick video where bloomberg analyst mike maglone explains what he thinks is going to happen to bitcoin next let's take a look got to ask you about bitcoin let's close off on bitcoin uh, that word anticipation i think the answer is yes the market's priced in a significant amount of fomo and buying because of etf and i think what it's missing is Bitcoin is still relative to the number one benchmark uh, risk asset in the world. It's still about a three, three, vol three times volatility asset. It's still much more higher volatility than, than the U.S. Uh, stock market, S&P 500, than gold and U.S. Treasury. So I'm fearful if I'm right about this normal reset and stock market goes down, that it pulls all risk assets down, particularly Bitcoin. So I'm concerned that the market is trading up on one of the simplest easiest trades ever oh it's going to go up because there's an etf that's one thing i'm worried about david and one of the things about bitcoin is when i got really bullish on it in april 2019 when it was around three to four thousand for up to five thousand because everybody still there's a lot of haters out there now there's just so much consensus it's going to go up you got to be careful buying an asset that is widely cons well, expected you, you to rise <laughs> you don't buy the argument that uh should equities fall uh it, it's uh, bitcoin will be a safe haven uh anti-volatility play at some point yes but right now it still has a high beta equities it needs to prove it so let's look at happened 2023 everything's up bitcoins went up more right most risk assets what happened 22 everything went down bitcoin went down, down more that's a high beta asset it hasn't changed so i like to say it's been a great leading indicator the latest breakout was a good leading uh, indicator for the stock market to follow but we have to look forward to number one thing in risk management when you sit in front of that value at risk model and you see a high beta asset that has three times the volatility the benchmark and for global assets on the planet as s p 500 i'm like yeah good luck it's supposed to do that eventually that's what people tell me who want me to buy it who have a vested interest but the rules of markets are typically Positive, positive beta assets with high volatility usually go down when the tide goes out. And at some point, I think I just need to see the proof that it's showing the divergent strength. That right now it's just up with everything else. The here's the key thing I'd like to point out is one of the best performing assets this year is GBTC, the Great Scale Bitcoin Trust. Now that looks like it still has more upside because of it going to ETFs, and that has been the better play I think in uh, in Bitcoin because of that tilt towards ETFs. I don't think I've ever asked you about the Bitcoin happening. Let's end it here. Bitcoin happening is happening next year. Uh, people have pointed out that every single time it's halved six months after it's happening, uh, the price has gone up. Can you give us a case as to how or why this time could be different if you were to present a this time is different case? It's a known known. Everybody knows it. I'm not ever really been much to analyze the known knowns like that. Everybody points it out. It's But it's also a key thing that's always kept me somewhat overall bullish of Bitcoin. That's diminishing defined supply. I mean, it's so great to measure it. It's going to go from, what, 900 coins a day to 450 coins a day. Boom, that's it, bar none. And demand and adoption going up. Over time, that asset should go up. But it's such a known known. I'm more worried about the macro that's already been a, a priced in that we're going to just continue all assets rising, Bitcoin rides, rise rises more. What I'm worried about is just the normal recession, stock market goes down and risk assets go down more. At some point, it's going to trade more gold and log bonds. And the way I see it this year, it's just up the most. It's up about the same volatility weighting it is versus the NASDAQ and S&P 500. Everything's up. What's so great about that? So here's my point is if you had um, held onto the NASDAQ and you're up 46% or, the, or so this year and had the volatility weighted amount in S in versus the Bitcoin, it's up about the same. Well, Mike Maglone does not seem very bullish. In fact, he seems quite bearish. And the main reason why he's bearish because he thinks we are going into a recession and Bitcoin will drop just like everything else. He thinks stock market, real estate market, uh, commodity market will all go down the drain. And he thinks Bitcoin could be that as well. However, on the other hand side, I think Bitcoin could be actually a hedge against recession. Yes, historically, BT drops whenever everything drops, but look, Bitcoin could be fly to safety this time around. Let me know what do you guys think. Comment below, subscribe, and like this video.